and welcome back to another uh, episode. Now, I know I told you I'm, I'm a, I'll be reviewing beers, local beers, and stuff like that. Every now and then, though, on a sporadic moment, no reason whatsoever, I will decide to review liquor. And that is because I enjoy liquor just as much as I enjoy beer. Shocker. But I also, I find myself having a good tongue for it. And some people, it's just, it's just tough natural. A lot of people prefer liquor over beer, and that's no fault to their own, so maybe I can attract those crowds as well. So I'm going to just jump back and forth, jack and forth. Sometimes I'll have two episodes in one. Just depends on how messed up I am at the moment. So for tonight, I'm probably going to end up reviewing... You know what? Here, let's do this. So we're doing Texas local shit for the first time. I really do local whiskey. And this, my friend, says I review a no label beer prior to this. And I review this. And this is a barrel strength bourbon. Aged malt single barrel malt whiskey, and it was made by none other than a no label beer. Now, I don't have the exact beer that they made it with. The beer that they made it with was an elder, which is a milk stout. Uh, the legend goes and the story goes that a batch of milk stout went bad for whatever reason, whatever happened, they screwed up the batch and it ended up being sour. So, before, uh, they were, right before they were to throw out the whole batch and start all over, I guess they had the owner or the, uh, their friends with the owner of this particular distillery. And they were in nearby. And they said, hey, well, rather than you throwing away a, a, a good batch of sour beer, let me have it and let me do something with it. I have a small price, I'm pretty sure. Or whatever fee or recuperating that comes with it. They said they agreed to it. And they made a once in a lifetime whiskey. Because in the end of the day, they have no clue why the batch went bad, how the batch is made, but whatever is made out of that batch with this whiskey can't be duplicated at all. So this is a once in a lifetime whiskey. It's a super rare whiskey. I'm pretty sure it is. I mean, it's extremely local. It's a small, small company. I've had some of their whiskeys they're not bad. Well, they're pretty good. There is one I'm going to get a bottle of so I can review later on in the future, which is a, um, it's a French toast whiskey. So it's supposed to taste like cinnamon toast crunch. Haven't gotten a hand on that yet. I will here soon. One, one man, one budget, one salary. So bear with me. But today, I'll review this one. I already had it before, if you can tell. But why not? I'll share my experience with you guys. Here, this thing has a good cork. Whiskey bottles, any bottle with a good fucking rubber cork, it's a good thing. Holds everything nice. It sounds sexy. Alright. Now, I drink whiskey a lot. Big fan of bourbon. Huge, huge fan of bourbon. Huge, huge fan of whiskey in general. Bourbon, especially, mainly because I enjoy the smoky flavor, more smoky taste to it. And once you figure out how to drink bourbon, it's it's a whole trail of its own, and it becomes this giant snake wave of its own. But this particular um, brand, which I'm sorry, that's my fault. I didn't even mention the name of it. Shire Distillery. Now, Shire Distillery is in the same location, same area as Baba Brewery, which will be um, Brookshire, hence the name. Brookshire, Texas, right outside of Katy, Texas. Shire Brewery's only been around for two years. But they've been making a lot of whiskeys, a lot of bourbons. This one's particularly the first time they ever made a single barrel. And rumor has it, and the story goes, this is the very first whiskey that they ever made. Ever. And it took them three years or 
two years to bottle it and make it because it had it aged in a certain way. Now, I before buying this bottle, I was used to already like filtered um whiskey. This one is 102 proof with an alcohol content of 50. Well, I get it. So when I was getting it, I'm used to drinking like already watered down whiskey. So the barrel A strength. I have never had a barrel strength whiskey before prior to this bottle. So I didn't know you had to add water to dilute it to your own specification. People do drink it straight. And I'm gonna drink straight right now because I don't feel like getting water. But with that being said, this here is a good way to start. So, let it aerate a little bit. And uh, it still has that little soft it actually, it, it, it softened a little bit better since the first time I opened it. You can smell, you can smell, actually, you can smell the fucking beer. I never noticed that before. So, if you ever had, uh, well, of course not. If you're from Houston, you ever had the Elder Milk Stout. And that usually has a very distinct milky uh, scent, like a, a strong creamery. And it's very distinct. And this here, you can smell that, along with like the the spices and the definitely smell the barrel. Definitely smell the ethanol. So you gotta be when you're doing these slippers, FYI, don't put your nose all the way in it because you're gonna knock yourself out. Especially when it comes to barrel and strength. I made that mistake once. Now, I can show you how to do science with chemistry, but I just don't feel like doing it right now. That's just mine. I just gonna have to get off screen and do it. So, yeah. Should have probably practiced a little more. Okay. But yes, I smell the sweetness. I do smell the barley. I smell that El elder milk stout, that sweet elder milk stout. Hint a little cinnamon. And some fruit, some citrus fruit. Okay. Let's go. You know what? I have no idea if it's because I've been had a few already. Ooh, that that was a burn up here. But the initial fucking taste, the initial sip on that is pretty, pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. Uh, it wasn't, trust me guys, it wasn't like that initially. Maybe because the air got in and in and out of it, you know, over time and it aged itself. The air really quality changed the, the substance of it. Because that was more of a tolerable drink. Initially, it wasn't like that. Initially, I had to tell it myself. But this right here, it's a, it's a good whiskey. Uh, wow, okay. It's very smooth when it wants to be. It still has a nice little kick at the end. Just to remind you, it is barreled age, it's barrel strength. And so it's not diluted at all. Diluted means whenever you whenever you make a barrel or bourbon barrel, they have to dilute it to a certain percentage. Sometimes they don't. They choose to go the other route, meaning they just serve out the purity of the pure. And you have to yourself dilute it with ice or water. However, you do it. And some people have a specific way to do it. And that's the whole two cube, one cube, one drop, two drops come into play. I've gotten I played with that concept a little bit in the past. I found bourbons that do taste better with three drops. I found bourbons that taste better with three ice. It's subjective. It's based on your flavor. Now, I'm a preach again, like I preached before. This always this channel, this whole concept has always been for normal people with normal things. 
a normal concept. It's not going to cater to the snobs. And if you're a normal person who just wants to drink decent whiskey, you might not like this one. This might not be on your shelf. Mainly because it's too complex. I'm not insulting anyone's intelligence out there saying, what the fuck that means? It means that there's a lot of work to make this good. And it requires a certain taste buds that you're willing to do. It's work. Most people don't want to work. Most people just want a good taste liquor. I get that. I respect that. It's understandable. Uh, people like me or people other a handful of other people are willing to do the work, are willing to actually sit there and taste it. And think, yeah, this is this, this is that, this is the other. Some, most people don't. And I don't blame them. It's, we're here to have a good time. We're not here to fucking do a science experience. With that being said, for most common folks, they won't like this one. Uh, mainly because of that. It's just too complex. It's too harsh. You have to work to find what you like. And they don't want to do it. They don't have to take the time to do that. Now, for people who are more upscale, are willing to do the work, are willing to put in the effort, are willing to find that right flavor, the right amount of cubes, the right aeration, you're going to love this. Because once it hits that spot, it is one of the sweetest whiskeys you will ever have. And that's sort of that. But other than that, the other stuff that the shower makes, for what I'm told, outside of the two that I've had before, they're pretty good in a.m. I'm going to get my hands on little things. I will review them on this channel as well. But until then, Godspeed, good night, God bless. This is your random drinking guy. Thank you very well.